After using this tool for so many years, I have just realized I've been doing GraphQL wrong. Wrong is probably a harsh word, but my one little mistake has cost me huge performance losses, made my code really untidy, and most importantly, it's become a huge security risk. Okay, that was unnecessary. Most of us have been using GraphQL the Hasura way. Here, we take a GraphQL API which may or may not be auto-generated and we expose it directly to our front-end. This is precisely the problem. Okay, now a few of you might be wondering, what about the GraphQL servers that I write? First of all, why? Secondly, you can continue writing your own GraphQL server or use something like Hasura. The problem is not on how we create or write these APIs. The problem is on how we expose these APIs to the front end for consumption. Don't worry, because in this video, we'll not only explore this problem in more detail, but also come up with a one-step solution you can adopt today. So stick around till the end. Let's start with the most critical challenge with GraphQL, security. Okay, we really need to stop doing this. In GraphQL, we describe what we want in a text query and post that to our GraphQL endpoint. This textual query could be anything. I can literally fetch whatever data I want. I can write super complicated queries to choke up the server and the scariest one of them all. I can write a single mutation to delete everything. Everything. The solution to this is simple, right? All you need to do is set up an allow list. We basically whitelist the queries the front end is allowed to submit. Allow lists are super important. It's literally mentioned in the production checklist Hasura recommends. Now this does not eliminate the risk of exposing your database model to the outside world, but it does prevent bad actors from screwing us over. Using allowed lists makes sense, as the benefits of GraphQL are mostly during development. We will almost never need to change our queries in production. That will never happen. This brings me to my next point, the war of REST versus GraphQL. Since our GraphQL queries are static in production, they essentially act as RESTful APIs. Correction, they act as RESTful APIs without any of the benefits. One undeniable advantage of using REST is that you can cache its response at the CDN layer. This just isn't possible when using GraphQL. This is because all GraphQL queries get served from a single endpoint, making selective caching really difficult. Now, I know solutions like Hasura provide caching functionality but that's caching at the API server level. That just can't compete with caching on something like Cloudflare, which has edge locations throughout the globe. Now, I totally understand that not all requests can be cached, but if we can achieve caching for even a small subset of our critical APIs, it will make all the difference. Another cool aspect of REST is middleware chaining. In REST, I can selectively apply middlewares for authentication and authorization, caching, even encryption and decryption of requests based on the URL. There's a whole ecosystem built around REST in this regard. Achieving similar mechanics in GraphQL would be really difficult. Okay, just to be clear, I'm not trying to discourage you from using GraphQL. The point I'm trying to make is that the benefits of using GraphQL over REST exist only during development. Once you push your apps over to production, those advantages turn into disadvantages really quick. But like I said, I'm going to propose a solution you can use to mitigate all these problems. So stick around till the end to find out. But before I do that, there is one last problem I want to share with all of you. GraphQL queries are nothing but string queries. This means that my front end will be littered with files which look something like this. Ew. Now I know this isn't a problem for a whole bunch of you, but that file does not look good. And a code base which doesn't look good is a code base which will never be understood. That rhyme was dope. So what can we do about all of this? Step one is to subscribe and smash that like button. I'm serious. That's, that's step one. On a more serious note, what is the solution? Simple. Just develop using GraphQL and deploy using REST. Wait, that made zero sense. The real benefit of using GraphQL is empowering the API consumer to pick and choose the data they need. That's a concept we can never compromise with. So what if we continue writing GraphQL queries like we usually do, but now our API server instantly compiles the query into a REST API for us? It's not that hard if you think about it. 
A GraphQL query already exposes what variables it expects. These variables can become part of the query parameter or the request body, and the operation name can become the endpoint URL. It's definitely doable and it doesn't end here. Since GraphQL is strongly typed, we can auto-generate a Swagger or OpenAPI spec as well. This further means that I can now generate a client SDK in any language just like that. All of this can happen automatically by writing a single GraphQL query. This is the wonder graph way of using GraphQL, and this is what they call server-side GraphQL. That's a lot of GraphQL. In a wonder graph project, which you can create using the Wondercuddle Cuddle CLI, there are just three steps you need to do. You first specify your data sources, which can be a database or an open API spec of your REST API. WonderGraph will automatically generate a GraphQL schema using these sources. Step two is writing the GraphQL queries directly in your text editor, which is totally awesome. All GraphQL queries get automatically compiled into REST APIs. This will also generate a client SDK for us. Step three is using the freshly generated SDK directly in your project. That's it. It's that simple. Now I know what you're thinking. Using this will cause major breaking changes. That's the cool part. WonderGraph also supports using other GraphQL APIs as a data source and can expose a GraphQL API as well. Now to be clear, I strongly discourage you from exposing your GraphQL APIs directly, but you can use it for incremental migrations. What I can do is import the schema of my existing GraphQL API into WonderGraph. WonderGraph will then expose this API directly as GraphQL with some minor modifications. I can then start compiling my known GraphQL queries to REST one by one. Now that I think about it, another simple solution would be to direct all GraphQL requests to my old server and use WonderGraph to serve my newly created REST APIs. That's actually a good idea. I should have probably started with that one. Overall, this server-side GraphQL concept and WonderGraph seems to be a very elegant way of using GraphQL. WonderGraph is wonderful. What is wrong with me? WonderGraph still cannot replace something like Hasura in terms of features. Hasura has really good support for Postgres, but WonderGraph can sit on top of Hasura to compile GraphQL into REST. And if you think this is exciting, you absolutely need to check out my next video, which will take microservice communication to the next level. Until then, don't forget, I am your tech bot. You're on YouTube and hopefully in real life.